it was kind of interesting. It was just interesting. Why? Yeah, so we're not going to say any names or anything like that. But this is it. Like, um, I guess this is why we can settle into this kind of group as observers and discuss things yeah. without being emotionally attached is because we're always looking to see what what is it that the person wants? What is it that they're trying to sell me? How are they trying to recruit me? What kind of movement are they trying to get me to join? What is the big picture? Where is the big aha? And it's kind of like, um, gosh, it's just like, if I think of it, it's like Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, right? It's like, you won the free ticket. But it's like so many little gotchas when everybody goes there, like, Oh, you're going to get sucked up into a chocolate tube. Oh, you're going to. Yeah, yeah. You, or, or you're going to eat this thing. And if you eat too much, you're going to turn to a big purple blueberry. Or you're going to get sucked up into a wind machine. And it's like, yeah, it's free. And it looks like a prize. But what is it? Where's the gotcha? And I think this is where we're at, where we're watching people get sucked in because they they see what the shiny object, they got the shiny object sy syndrome and they're getting sucked into whatever kind of movement because I call them campaigns because I see things like Star Wars. It's like, this person is your enemy. This person's bad. And so that's a campaign when people are telling you like, this person's bad and watch out for them. And then, you know, because why? Because I want you to join my movement and follow me and go with me and do what I do and do as I say. Or another campaign of, you know, even reading certain books, like they want you to get sucked into reading this book so you can join a club and you can be a part of this. And, and we're just constantly being exposed to campaigns. And um, as we were discussing earlier with the government, there's always a left and there's always a right. And the left is trying to get you to hear what they say so you can go against the right, not necessarily for your own safety, but so they can herd you into a direction. And I like to explain this thing about like the Hillary and Obama, because that's one party. Right. But it was like, if you're really concerned about women's right, you vote for Hillary. If you're really concerned about black people, then you vote for Obama. And they got everybody all stirred up, people who normally wouldn't vote. And then they got them all together and said, hey, vote Democrat. And we're going to pick this candidate who they already knew who they were going to pick. Right. But they had to get you to care. So they had to have the two the two of them like rock them, talk them robots fighting and saying horrible things about each other, right? And then all of a sudden they reach an alliance and they want everybody to come together because they wanted you to fall off the cliff together. And this isn't just Democrat, it's Republican, it's spiritual versus politics that I feel like in this spiritual community, it's just another political group that's saying, look over here, come over here, be complacent and focused on us. And then I'm going to tell you love and light. Everything is good. This side won. Everything is perfect. And so it's just another way. And me and Terry were just talking like she said the black hats and the white hats. But then it's like they both wearing hats. You know what I'm saying? They're still covering a ball spot, some shit that you don't see and taking you to a place where you don't know. And it's like, why Why are we going down these roads and letting people take us down a road where we don't even know where the road ends? We don't know where the road is going. And so I'm like a Bible person. And I remember how it always said that the road to hell is wide, right? <laughs> they said the path is wide. So whenever I would see a lot of people caring about stuff, I'm like, mm, hell no, I don't want to do it. Like everybody watched um, America's Got Talent. I'm like, no, I'm not watching it. Anything everybody was always doing, I was like, no, I want to do the opposite. That's just how I am. And so I'm naturally suspicious <laughs> and I'm always just watching and it's not like naturally suspicious in a negative way it's naturally suspicious in a in a cautious way 
even though when I'm ready to run and jump and make a decision, I, I, I base it on what connects to me, not on what other people around me are doing. And I feel like that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to let Terry, if you had something to add to that. You're muted. So I just wanted to add this is that a bird has a left wing and a right wing, right? And so you got the, yeah, exactly. And they could be opposite, but who's in the center? The head. And so you have to question, you always question like, okay. And that's where, for me, that's where I come from is I question when things happen, like, okay, why did this, why is this happening? What is this about? Uh, do I, what do I need to know more about? So that's when I sort of go into my heart and connect with my higher self. And then it's like, okay, how do I perceive this? What do I need to know about this? And that's just sort of who, this is the way that I have now, uh, how I navigate through these times. I have to find out what's the right answer for me because what's right for me isn't necessarily what's right for the person you know, three doors to the left of me. You're you're muted. No, you're muted. No, <laughs> no you Oh, so uh, I think I'll be quiet, and then you maybe you do your group message, your 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 group. Reading now because okay, I'm going, I'm going to I'm going to select a card for the group here, and I'm taking it from the Sacred Traveler. Um, I had a couple of things that were on my mind this morning, but I'll see what she what she has to say. Well, say it because then, then, then it's then, it, then it's like, oh my God, Terry was right. <laughs> Like, that's why I like to speak first and then pull the What I was thinking about is that we're, we're into September. So we have had, we've got the, the last quarter of the year to deal with, or the last third of the year to deal with. And, you know, we had aspirations. We planted seeds at the beginning, uh, you know, at the end of the summer, into the spring. We planted seeds. We're now in a time of harvest. And so we can look back at to what we have, what have we accomplished over the last um, nine months, eight months? What have we been, you know, what have we focused on? And if we, if we haven't accomplished what we thought we would, we still have time to do it. I mean, there's never, we're never running out of time. We don't have to have it done by a certain, but it's, it's a time for a check-in for us because we are going into a new season. We are, um, we're in that late summer. We're into that um, season that we would call the Earth season, and so it's it's just that time of of um, taking in our bounties. What did we create in our life, or over the last time, and how do we now interpret what what we created over the last time? So, <laughs> so the card that I took was a grounding. And the grounding card is go deep and explore your roots. Well, you know, I think I think um, that's along the same lines as I was I was sort of contemplating is what have we what did we um, what are the fruits of our harvest where, you know, we planted the seeds, they grew and, um, you know, we can um, we can now um, take the time to. Um, enjoy what it was that we, we started to create a few months ago. I think so. even on top of that, though, you're saying getting grounded, go to the foundation of what you know is true, mm -hmm. what you truly yeah. believe, the where is your heart, what you know to be true, what you know to be real. And now as you look out, it's not for people to change your foundation. Yeah. It's not for people to change your true beliefs, but 
do people resonate with you? Do does does the messages they give you resonate, or are they trying to lift you up out of your flower pot and replant your roots in a place that's unfamiliar? This is the importance of being grounded. This when people come along with wild information or you know ideas and beliefs. Does this match who you truly are? Becoming more educated or knowledgeable about things is one thing, but does it completely cut you off at the root so that now you won't know where you are or what you're doing and you're kind of wandering around aimlessly in the desert now because your roots have been cut off and you've been separated from what you fundamentally believe? There's these fundamental beliefs that you have that you stay firm on, right? Like, don't go around killing people or don't steal or don't fight. Things that you have inside you that you easily become compromised when you start to follow other people. And I just funny just posted this, wasn't even thinking about that, but it's easy for people to yell you're compromised when they're compromised. It's easy... It's hard to tell when people are compromised when they're comp when you're compromised or how much are you compromising your values and they say compromise because they're talking about a chip in your head but when I'm saying compromise you could say chip in your head but are you compromising on your values and your beliefs are you giving away your sovereignty or your soul to be a part of a group, to be cool, to be known, to be famous, to get money, whatever it is, are you compromising your values and your principles and your, your morals and your integrity just to be a part of something else or to become greater than what you really are? Not really understanding that you're actually giving up your greatness by the compromise. So, yeah, so I, I'm going to um, I'm going to take three cards on this from the map because uh, and that is by Colette Baron Reed. And what I like about the map, um, these particular cards, is that they they really do give you um, a direction. Um, like, so I, I think for the group, it's like, okay, we have. Um, We've been grounded. We've been cultivating things. And what is it that we just generally, um, I, I think you, you covered an amazing uh, topic there, Erica. Let's see what the cards are telling us here. So I got three here. I see. So the first one is the spirit of the place. Well, I find that really interesting because um, we're just we're talking about grounding and the spirit where we are. There is a spirit. There is a vibration. There is a signature of the earth, whether we're talking about sitting in our apartment, whether we're talking about our city, whether we're talking about our country. There's um, vibration, vibrational aspect of the earth that we can connect with and um there is that's part of that whole grounding system and and us connecting with um that higher energy that is within the earth space for skin yeah, yeah i can hear you was that in your in your skin? Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is your place. This is your temple. Right. right. Clear clear your space and be comfortable in your space. And, and because you, you take know, this you, with you, you, whether you're home or not, you, you take this with you. The spirit of this place. And you take the spirit of this place with you, no matter whose house you're at, no matter where you go, you're in, you got the place, right? You're the space, the spirit in this place. And wherever you go, you ground that. On an airplane, you can ground. Yeah. In another country, you can ground as you travel. Yeah. 
And so the second card is ghost lands, which is really interesting is because, um, you know, we can see that the, these ghost lands, uh, <clears throat> they're, they're kind of like, they're not real. And we, what we were just talking about is these other places that want to pull us to these different beliefs or to these different understandings, they're ghost lands. There's not a, they're not based in a reality. They are based in what they want us to think about. And so if we are in this place of our spirit holding, holding that energy, then these ghost lands, we can recognize them as not holding any kind of um, material understanding for us. They, they, these are just um, castles in the sky or um, places that just are not um, conducive to our spiritual growth. Apparitions, chasing mirages, unreachable goals, false pretenses, smoke and mirrors, things that are coming at you. Um, do you ever see that movie, The Wishmaster? It probably not. This is an old movie. And so, but when you make a wish with the little leprechaun guy and it, everything turns into shit because it's not what you think it is, right? You, you know, they, they even say, even when you mess with a genie or a gin, like you, you wish for this, but you actually get that. Or when you put hope and potential and you think someone else is going to save you and they're not. When someone else is going to fix it for you, but they're not. Or you idealize people, but they're not what you think they are. There's a false right. image of you that you think is solid and firm. And if you put your hands on it, it disappears. It's false. False hope, false people, false guidance. I think this is leveling out. <laughs> it's just amazing. Well, and it, it, it's interesting. What's the number here? 17. <laughs> How many people have placed a, a value on that number? Um, you know, like we can look at, um, at the past. We can look at the future, but we have just here and now. And so this other stuff is just these, like you said, they're mirages. They're not... They're not based on 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 a reality that we, you know, that we ground ourselves in. And I mean, how we talk about the government as well, and then seventeen. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, you know, it's, it's, and then the last card is making a choice. It is uh, so. It's always we always have the the power to make the choice, right? We can live in these ghost lands or we can connect with the spirit of the place and the spirit of ourselves and, and be grounded in who we are um, instead of chasing these lofty castles in the sky or mirages that are nothing is, they're not as they appear. So we have, we always have that choice to make. We, we make the choice and it's sometimes, sometimes making the easy choice is compromising ourselves you know like oh well, i'm just going to go along with everybody else because it's easier instead of taking making the choice and say damn i'm not going to watch you know uh <laughs> america's got talent because everybody else does i'm going to watch something totally different or do something different and maybe that particular night i'm going to go and and uh, uh you know like start doing some uh, bead work instead of watching tv those are things that we make that choice and it's not always the easy choice but our society has gotten to uh to a point where oh, we just we just crave the easy point right we 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 go we go to the fast food restaurant and sitting and and you know going to the grocery store and thinking about what we're going to cook for supper you know what's something good and nutritious or, you know, are we going to go to the fast food chain? Because that's easier. But it doesn't mean that it's better for us. But we've made that choice. But it doesn't sustain us. It, there's no sustenance to it. Meanwhile, you know, you can decide to make your dinner and you can go out and buy the fresh vegetables and fresh fruit. Well, you've now created a, a whole essence. And, and you've created something that's going to nurture you. 
Um, and, you know, meanwhile, you go to fast food and there's no nurturing there. You're just filling a spot and then it's gone. Choosing what you're going to digest, mm -hmm. whatever information, whatever you want to take in, and then you just put it into the terms of food. So choosing what we're going to digest. And are you going to swallow it whole? Or are you going to take a sip? <laughs> are you going to eat the meat and spit out the bones? How are you going to eat this? How are you going to, how are you going to digest it? I love it. I think this is one of the most powerful messages uh, that we've come together to look at. And it just came together beautifully, Terry. Wonderful. I just said, <laughs> uh, like what you just said, though. I was on the chat and somebody was talking about something. I I I wasn't I ain't trying to be judgmental, but it seemed like the person was talking to the, the doom and gloom type of situation, like still catering into the fear. And I had said to her, it's like you can only consume what you eat. You know what I mean? So that's the analogy for the day, right? You you can only give others to consume what you have, right? Like if you don't have love, you can't give others love. If you don't have um, a foundation of positivity, then you can't give anybody else the, the foundation of positivity. And unhealed people can't go around healing other people, right? Because you're still unhealed. So I think that that's what Dom, Dom is getting at too. But um, this is the recording for prosperity or pro what do they call it? Prosterity or prosperity? <laughs> or both, right? This is the reading of the day. Well, this, is our, this, is, this is what, you know, this is the thing about what we reap is what we sow. Yeah. Well, oh, pardon school, me, what we sow is what we reap. <laughs> at school, we, we, you know, before the football game, they said this is the pigskin prognostication. So this is, this is the this is the prognostication for the week. Get your mind right. <laughs> and um, I'll I'll go ahead and end the recording unless unless you wanted to add something to the recording, Dom. I didn't even know you was recording. But yeah, I just, know. But yeah, it's just, that's all though. You know, deep. It's a lot of things you and already said that. I was, you know what I mean, like be thinking and I've been working on anyway, so it's right on. Yeah, you're not it. negative for being suspicious because it's not actually being, it's being suspicious. You're an observer and you're actually in the game. You're actually like, how do you say it? Like you're actually participating and not just going through automated motion, making... You're kind of like the referee. Right. You're not like making you're impulse decisions. Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're not making impulse you're decisions. Watching. You're making educated, educated get deductions. I don't want to say educated guesses, but we, we a lot of times we're making educated guesses. We're not just randomly going off of, you know, the whatever we think other people, whatever they're doing, we're actually going in and studying and saying, hmm, what should I do about this? Based on the information that I've had and processing what, what I got going on inside of me, what should I do next? Where am I going? What do I do with this information? And as it's coming in, you're saying, what, what do I do with this information? We're actually processing in the CPU. Your central processing unit is working. And I'll just close it and stop the recording. Bye, guys. <laughs>